I'd uh, first like to bring on to the program a special guest. Uh, his name is uh, Peter Frederick, and he is a specialist in, uh, in Hindu nationalism taking place in Hindu uh, in, a, in a major way. Uh, and uh, to help me uh, interview you, we have with us also here on this show today, uh, Attorney Michael Peffer, who heads up the Southern California office uh, for PJI. So welcome, Michael, as well. Thank you. Now, uh, Peter, uh, this is uh, a real interesting issue. Many people are wondering, like, why are we, you know, bringing on this topic of Hindu nationalism, something taking place in Hindu uh, in uh, in India? Um, but it's it's actually very important to Americans, uh, as we will discuss. So, first, what is Hindu nationalism, and what are the goals of these Hindu nationalists in India? Yeah, Brad, Michael, uh, thank you so much for having me. So Hindu nationalism, I mean, it's pretty simple, straightforward to grasp what it is. It's, it's religious nationalism. It's a combination of, of Hinduism with, with, with politics. And its goal is uh, basically to destroy secular pluralistic democracy within uh, India and to view India as being a country that is for Hindus and only for Hindus. And they want to turn India into an officially Hindu nation like you see with, for instance, a lot of Islamic republics around the world. But this would be the Hindu equivalent. Um, it's spearheaded basically by this paramilitary organization in, in India called the RSS and its political wing, the BJP, which has been in total control of national power of India since 2014. Um, its goals include things like eliminating um, religious minorities from the countries, especially Christians and Muslims, and they're committed to doing that through all sorts of violent methods, uh, including over the decades assassinations. For instance, these are the people who, were, who uh, assassinated Gandhi. Uh, terrorist bombings, lynchings, church burnings, massacres of minorities, uh, including Christians and, and also Muslims. And it, it directly connects to us here in America, though, for a lot of reasons, but one I will really focus on. Yeah, so I, I, I just want to say, because yeah. a lot of people are watching this program saying, well, that's interesting in, in India, you know, but, but what, uh, you know, why should, uh, you know, American Christians be, be concerned about it? I mean, it's, India is so far away, it's, it's atrocious what's taking place, obviously we should care, but there's more to it than, ju than just, you know, uh, objecting to the atrocity of, of this new Hindu nationalism. There's, there's more uh, to, uh, to the MCI with regards to its impact for Americans and American Christians, right? Exactly. And there's two basic reasons then on that that I would offer. One is that this um, Hindu nationalist movement, this whole family of organizations back in India, which have come to control the country there, have direct affiliates here in the U.S., all around the U.S., including some of which have recently been registered as foreign agents in this country. Those direct affiliates have uh, served a multifold pro uh, um, uh, uh, in multifold ways uh, to aid and abet what's happening over there in, in the country of India. They, they serve as a support base, both material, where they, they send people and, and money from America over to India to help prop up the regime over there. In the U.S., they serve as a support base and a propaganda mouthpiece by preventing uh, any discussion of, of these issues and by spreading propaganda on behalf of that regime over there in India. And they also have served as a support base by getting their sympathizers or their associates into elected offices in America, including at the congressional level and uh, high-level state offices. Now, the other way is, as far as why American Christians should care, is because India has emerged in the past nine years of this regime over there as the most dangerous country in the world in which to be a Christian, at least the most dangerous democracy in the world in which to be a Christian. Christians are facing unprecedented levels of violence and and uh, as well as suppression on, on a legal legislative basis by the government over there. Routinely, especially over the past couple of years, Christians going to Sunday services face this in India. They face mob attacks, mobs of 50, 100, 500 people, oftentimes accompanied by the police, invading their church services, snatching up the, the congregants, the clergy, beating them up, and then handing them over to the police who file charges against the victims, not the perpetrators. Wow. Now, within that context here in America, what we're seeing is we're seeing the U.S. government increasingly uh, creating this intimate 
alliance with India, even as this is a situation which um, which Christians over there in that country are facing. So the Biden Where administration, we, Peter, I hate to interrupt you, but uh, yeah. the, the Biden administration then is not addressing this issue at all with regard to the tyranny and the human rights issues that are horrifically taking place to, to Christians uh, throughout, uh, you know, throughout India. I know, Michael, yeah. you had a question you wanted to ask as well. Yeah, how, how's the church in, in America responding? And, and you know, I, I guess, should they be doing more? Well, this is why I'm so happy to be speaking with you today, is because in my experience, decades of experience now, but especially at least a good five or six years on this issue, working as a journalist, but I happen to also be a Christian myself, my uh, experience is that the American church, by and large, is mostly ignorant of the, the uh, even the existence of persecution of Christians in India, let alone the gravity of it. And um, the church in America, unfortunately, is largely silent. Um, and I think they're largely silent because they don't know that this is happening. We're aware of, of issues in China and the Middle East and in Nigeria, so many other places right now. Um, but we have not really turned our, our minds around to kind of get out of this, this lens of just um, uh, very basic uh, lens of, of thinking of India as being nothing more than the land of Gandhi, Bollywood, and yoga, a place where everybody lives in peace and harmony, to understanding the nuances of the, of the on-the-ground reality there, of the political situation, and of the um, ongoing uh, and escalating uh, persecution of, of Christians. Right. The church in America needs to start educating itself first and foremost about the very existence of this persecution right. and then taking action from there. Yeah, well, I, I agree. It's, there's a lot of ignorance out there. People, a lot of people out there have the impression that Hindus are just these wonderful, peaceful people, you know, Gandhi, you know. Uh, in reality, uh, when they're, they're actually very, very dangerous, apparently. This is a massive, uh, they're in the majority uh, of India. I think people don't understand that as well. They're not, right. right? I mean, this, this is not like a little sect there in India, of, you know, one or two percent. This is a very powerful entity. Their politician is the head of India. And we're not talking about isolated incidents. We're talking about hundreds of churches being destroyed, uh, you know, monthly, weekly, right? Exactly. We're talking... Okay about routine okay. invasions of churches, church burnings, etc., etc. Okay. And I okay. think what we need to understand is that every religion has extremists within it, and that Hinduism is, is certainly uh, uh, um, no exception to that rule. Yeah, and I just want people to understand, you know, Peter, that uh, once again, we're not talking about just a small little part of India that's, that's doing this. We're talking about the entity, the organization, the politics that's in power that the people yes. elected, the majority of people wanted in power, that to me is what makes this extremely dangerous and definitely necessitates um, international pressures uh, to bring them back into line to be a not just a democracy, democratic republic, but to be a democratic republic that also respects human rights, including religious freedom. P uh, Peter, thank you so much for being on the program. We have to go, but uh, keep up the great work, and um, God bless you as you continue to get out this and Important information. Take care. Thank you so much, Ben. You know, Michael. Uh, you know, we look at this. I bet a lot. Of, I bet most Americans are completely naive of this new uh, ratcheting up of violence and persecution taking place in India. We've heard how China has ratcheted up the persecution against the Christians. Yeah. But now we see it happening in India at a at a very serious, alarming rate. And, uh, you know, we at PJI have uh, defended people seeking religious asylum whose lives are on the line uh, yes. back in that part of the world. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned we may have more religious asylum cases involving Christians who are literally in life and death situations uh, who make it to the United States and need to be uh, prevented from being sent back to certain death. Absolutely. And it's a big problem there.